Hi and welcome to the Inkwendo Guitars Workshop. My name is Daniel and in this video I'm going to show you yeah, my work in the workshop uh, last week while I was working on these two necks and then especially the headstock and I give you some tips and tricks along the way. To start off this week in the workshop I'm doing my headstock veneers and I've got a couple prepared already, several thicknesses, several color variations of the black limba and some with uh, black limba backing just to see what looks good and which one is thick or thin enough for my headstock because now that I have my tuners I can measure the clamping range of my tuners and adjust the thickness of my headstock veneer accordingly, accordingly so I have a nice and thick enough headstock uh, yeah and then hopefully I can glue them on tonight and tomorrow I can start working on the inlay and the tuner holes sometimes the hardest part in guitar building is making design decisions uh, <laughs> I've been staring at these two headstock veneers for more than half an hour now and I really can't decide which one to use. Should I use the lighter one with the black veneer at the back that has a nice contrast with the black hardware this guitar is going to get or should I use the darker one with a nice pattern and a nice coloring to it. But maybe it might be a bit too much with the black hardware. Decisions, decisions, decisions. Let me think on it for a while. I made up my mind, it's going to be the darker one. I had the glue for the headstock cure overnight and yeah, it looks great and now I can take them to my spindle sander and sand off all the excess. And although I love my spindle sander, it's a fantastic tool, I still do the final pass by hand because yeah, the spindle sander, even with a very fine grit sanding drum, uh, it's very easy when you linger too much at one spot that it creates a small little dent and yeah, that's something I try to avoid and yeah, then take 10 minutes 
with a piece of uh, wood, wooden block and a piece of sandpaper and just sand the headstock veneer flush with the side of the headstock. There are several methods you can use to determine where your tuner holes need to go. And for example, you can make a full size drawing uh, and use that as a template, or you can of course draw it out on the headstock itself. I usually like to use a combination of the two. First, I draw in the strings with the straightest string pool possible on the actual headstock, and then use my template and see if my actual drawing on the headstock is somewhere in the neighborhood of my template and that's yeah, just to make sure my string pool is as straight as possible and my uh, tuner holes are in the correct position so yeah let me give you a close-up and yeah take a look at how i plot out the position of the tuner holes so first i'm going to determine where the strings are coming from the neck using the nut or a similar nut that I'm going to use and just mark the string positions and yeah I, that's a, a downside of using black limba a, a regular pencil is very hard to see uh, besides using a nut, you could also use a string spacing ruler. If you're, for example, making your own nuts, you can use your string spacing ruler to determine the string positions. Next, I'm going to use my protractor to draw in the strings perpendicular to the nut. So I've changed the lighting a bit and now I hope you can see that I've drawn in the strings and a downside of using Black Limba and anyone who has used Black Limba before uh, can confirm this. It's very hard sometimes to see your pencil lines and I don't want to make them too obvious because then I have to send them off again. So I'm drawing in my lines very lightly. Now with my strings drawn in i can start determining where my tuner holes are going to be and when you have a straight side on your headstock for a six in line um, headstock for example it's pretty easy usually the tuners are um, have an offset from the edge of the headstock of about in between 12 to 15 millimeters so then you can just um, mark a line 15 millimeter 15 or 12 depends on what you want uh, from the side of your neck and start uh, determining your tuner holes keeping in mind the diameter of the tuner post and mine is about four millimeters so i have to keep an offset from the string of two millimeters for the center of my tuner so that would be easy with a curved uh, headstock you have a 
a challenge, so to say, and it's very complicated. And yeah, I will discuss this in my upcoming design a guitar video, perhaps, or maybe I do even a headstock design video separately because tuner positioning can get a bit complicated depending on what you're looking for. Do you want even spacing from the side? But that usually means that the spacing in between the tuners uh, might change especially with a curved headstock or do you prefer to have an equal spacing between your tuners and that means as you can see here that the distance from the side uh, will change depending on the curve you have uh, and such so very complicated i know that my first tuner hole needs to be 50 millimeters from the edge of the fretboard at the first string just a bit off i'm going to make a mark at 50 millimeters and use my ruler and where my two millimeter mark intersects the 50 i just drawn in this is where my first tuner is going to get that pencil is a bit too thin This is where my first tuner needs to go. So now that I've determined my first tuner hole, it's time to do the, uh, the rest. And I want my tuners to be spaced at 26 uh, millimeters. I, I'm going to have four tuners on one side. So I know I have to, my last tuner needs to be at uh, 78 millimeters. Uh, from the first one so I'm going to draw in a line and again from the string the two millimeters is right there now I can draw in a line between these two points And I can divide them in 26 from one. And 26 from the other side. Check if the intersection of these lines are still two millimeters from the string and it is yeah it's perfect so these are the locations of my four tuners so i want my two tuners on the other side for this headstock to be exactly mirrored with these two so I don't break into any trademarks I'm not breaking any trademarks or something for a 4x2 headstock used by uh, another guitar brand because they trademarked a specific layout for the tuners I looked it up, just to be sure. And that said, here in Europe, you can't trademark your headstock. So. Now I know I want my center of this tuner to be two millimeters away from the string. And keep in mind, this tuner post will be on the other side of the string. One, and that's two, again 26 millimeters apart, so this should be it, let me get my all. Final check, remeasure everything. And 
Yeah, and this should be it. And when you have a fully drawn out template, you could of course align it properly. And do a little check, and I'm not kidding. I may be not even half a millimeter off, and this is just paper, so I know uh, these holes are correct. So with these holes marked, I can take this neck to the drill press and drill these six holes. And I recommend using a drill press or a pillar drill instead of drilling these holes by hand. Uh, yeah, because of accuracy, that's one. And I believe using a drill press uh, prevents tear out even more than using a, a hand drill. And I always recommend when drilling all the way through a headstock or through a guitar body to use some sort of backing. And now this is an angled headstock with a volute, so I need some backing to fit it underneath my drill press. And having a backing also prevents tear out, especially when you even use masking tape and super glue to stick the backing to the back of the headstock. It's easier when using the drill press and it also even further prevents or helps to prevent tear out. So yeah, I'm going to stick this backing to the back of the headstock like I said and then use the drill press to press them in, do the second neck exactly the same and I'll see you in a moment. So the holes are drilled, a nice and easy job, and I have no tear out whatsoever. I've said this in previous videos, but I will repeat myself. The three key ingredients to prevent tear out is of course make sure you have a backing as tight as possible uh, yeah, underneath the material you're drilling through. Have a nice setup, good setup, pillared drill or drill press and make sure you have a very sharp, good quality drill bit. I recommend using bread point or bradle point drill bits because they have a cutting action uh, in comparison to regular drill bits that have more of a scraping action. Uh, yeah, that also prevents tear out and make sure yeah, it's a nice and good quality bread point drill bit. Um, I can recommend, and this is something I do, to have a good high quality set of drill bits dedicated for jobs like the tuner holes, uh, the holes for the control knobs and such, all holes that are sort of less visible on your guitar and that you re really don't want any tear out. Have a dedicated set for that and as soon as you suspect one gets dull, put it in with the rest of your drill bits for general use and get yourself a nice and sharp new one. The next job for me is to do the uh, Unquendor headstock logo inlay and I think you've seen me do plenty of inlays already so I'm going to put this in a time lapse and yeah I think this will take me two to three evenings to do and due to the magic of YouTube and video editing uh, for you guys it will only take a couple of seconds so see you in a moment.
legs are now yeah, done and the only thing left to do is get them into a nice guitar body which I hopefully have time for to start working on this week so for next week's video and uh, so keep an eye out for that one uh, yeah as always I hope you like this video and if you did please leave a like it really helps and if you have any questions suggestions comments let me know in the comment section down below and of course if you're new to my channel or if you're not already subscribed please hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell to get notified when i upload something new uh, yeah that's it for this week's video i hope you enjoyed it keep an eye out for next week's video but until then have a nice week